Hello nerd boxes and I am flying solo for today's popcorn theory but this one is a breaking stew's clue and we have to jump right into it. So this is a continuation of our last popcorn theory video that we had out there which is is Tara Carpenter Stumacher's daughter and we're going to jump right into it. All right, everybody take a quick mental note of what we're going to talk about first. Get a pen and paper out, write it down real quick because we are going to take a detour outside of horror to provide you with some background behind Radio Silence's Matt Bettinelli, Oakland, and Tyler Gillette's thinking and approach that is very similar to the MCU formula with hidden details. Now, if you've seen Marvel movies, over the last God knows how many years, you'll notice that sometimes, or almost every single time, they'll drop in these little hidden details that don't mean anything at the time that we see it, but then five, six movies come out, and then there's that detail being revealed to be a part of something bigger. And this is something that the Radio Silence guys also do. Now, keep in mind that they both credit Wes Craven with being the inspiration for them to go into filmmaking. Matt and Tyler sent me a really beautiful letter um, expressing how they became directors and were making this movie because of these films and that they were huge fans of Wes and that they really wanted to honor him um, and honor his voice. And that meant the world to me to read that letter. So that was definitely a big selling point for me. And as we know, not only do they love Scream, but they love horror just as much as we do. And all those Easter eggs in Scream 5 and Scream 6, the 200 plus that are out there, are not just to pay homage to the genre that they love. In fact, we have to take a look at Ready or Not, where they revealed key details about the plot of that movie and easter eggs that they hidden throughout the entire film especially in the beginning the secrets of the family and plot of the story are revealed early on when the film scrolls past several board games the first being labelle's gambit which features a devil on its cover then we see several more games like family ritual towers secret council abracadabra so as we can see that whole approach to planting little seeds here and there is something that they both do just like what is done in the MCU. So with that established, let's revisit the next piece of information, which is we all know by now, and if you don't, this may be news to you, that Wes Craven and Kevin Williamson had originally planned for Stu to return in part three. So that is key to note with the other things that we just covered. And while that story had to be scrapped because of the social climate at that time, components from Scream 3 slowly was filtered into the next three films. This was deliberately done, not only to build the hype for Stu's return, but for YouTubers like me, Craven something scary, Sister Pam, Killjoy Jake. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna end up promoting the film and who doesn't want free advertising? So we're creating the buzz for them, building that suspense for the upcoming films for what's to come so that the payoff and the advertising is done on us. Now, in our last theory, we talked about a story detail that was pulled from Scream 5 because it would have became too obvious in where we were going and that is tara having her father's necklace in place of the inhaler and that is what is the driving force to bring her back to the mocker house i left a message for mom i told her where we're going you good back there where is it where's what on my inhaler i usually keep an extra one should we go back whoa okay i vote for 
not going back to the murder hospital? Do you want to stop at a pharmacy? I need a prescription, but I left the next one in Amber's. Her house is on the way. And in our last story, we kind of talked about how Stu can be related to Tara and how that necklace could play a key component into it. And we've been talking about this in the comments for that video. And thanks to subscriber, a giant podcast, so giant you won't want to miss it. He did some additional digging and he has found the necklace in Scream 6. This all takes place when Tara is force feeding Ethan the buck knife. And if you go through it real quick, you're not gonna see the necklace. But if you slow it down and go frame by frame, you see that Tara is wearing a necklace. Now this isn't the same one that Stu was wearing in Scream 1996, but it is a necklace. And you're probably saying to yourself, it's a necklace, big deal. Lots of people wear necklaces. You want to keep in mind the hidden clues that the Radio Silence guys have done in Ready or Not, that MCU strategy of planting seeds for something that is going to pay off later. Surrounding Tara is what? Stu's smoking jacket? Stu's TV. So why do we have the necklace, which was pulled from Scream 5, and that kill happening where Tara is surrounded by Stu Marker stuff. And if you don't believe all of the coincidences are leading to somewhere, there's one more. What does Tara say to Ethan? I'm dying a fucking virgin. What does Stu say to Sydney? That's right. You gave it up. Now you're no longer a virgin. <laughs> now you gotta die. Those are the rules. So there you have it, folks. Not only we found a necklace that is talked about in the Scream 5 script, but there's further clues that Tara is now connected to Stu Marker because of where the kill takes place at the end of Scream 6, what she says, and oh, by the way, let's not forget that out of the core four characters, Tara is the only one that is not connected to a legacy character, right? Sam's connected to Billy. Mindy and Chad are connected to Randy. And that leaves Tara to be connected to who? Stu. So let me know what you think about this latest detail that is discovered. Drop it in the comments. If you have not seen the original video, go and check it out so that you know what we're talking about. And if you're still on the edge and you haven't seen some of the other videos about how Stu could have survived the TV falling on him or all the other clues that are leading up to Scream 7, go take a look at Stu's clues. Type Stu into the search box and you'll see all the Stu videos with all the evidence showing that he is alive. Now, before you go, Please drop a like on this video. Please drop a comment. Let's continue the discussion in the comments. Whether you think he's alive or not, if you're on the stew train or not, that's fine. Drop it in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and until the next Popcorn Theory.